And I'm Nick, and this is CAD Micro TV. And we're here at the Toronto Congress Centre at the Fabtech Show. Canada's leading metal forming and fabricating show. Wow, are there any words I didn't try to nope, squeeze in that I title? Said, I said it all. I said them all. <laughs> Otherwise known as Fabtech, and CAD Micro Solutions is here representing Mark Forge. And as you may or may not know, CAD Micro Solutions and Mark Forge have been longtime partners, and boy, are we excited to show you what they're debuting here this year. That's right, so let's get to it. Hi, everybody. We're here with Charles Liu, Senior Application Specialist for Mark Forge. Hi, Charles. Hey, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Nice to meet you. So as we understand it, it is the grand debut of the Metal X here in Canada. If you can kind of explain to us kind of what the reception's been like and kind of what the Metal X does. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I, it's been a long time coming, I guess. We've, we've kind of debuted the machine in the U.S. and It's nice to finally be able to have it up here and have, yeah. People, yeah, have people see it. It's like we get questions all the time over phone, over email, like when are we going to be able to see it? Do yeah. we have to go to Boston? Yeah. So now it's here. It's in Toronto. Um, yeah, obviously a lot of people have been excited about it. It. They're coming to our booth and they're checking it out, and I think overall um, it's, it's been really great um, just to have everybody around. So, what specifically does the Metal X do, and what kind of industries would be interested in a Metal X printer? Sure, yeah. So, um, the basis for the Metal X is that we're we're taking kind of two very well-known technologies, one being metal injection molding, and one being the um, FFF style printing. We're kind of combining them together. So, there's nothing super new here. Um, we're just marrying it in a way that makes sense for everybody. Um, we're forming metal injection mold feedstock without the mold. So if you can imagine being able to save tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars on the molds and just being able to make metal parts um, and post-process them just as you would um, any MIM feedstock material, um, we're able to then produce uh, just parts in metal that normally you wouldn't be able to produce otherwise. Wow, wow. So it seems that there's a lot of applications. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I see a couple a couple right here. Do you mind if we go ahead and take a look at these? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. We can take a look. All right. Yeah. Kind of walk us through what's happening here. Yeah. So, so we got a lot going on here. Can you just sort of explain to me and everybody at home what we're looking at? Are these prototypes? Are these end-use parts? What's going on? Sure, yeah. So a lot of these, uh, this is kind of a combination of parts that are in use and then demonstration parts to show off what we can do okay. and maybe even some of the limitations of the process. Okay. okay. So um, what we've got over here, uh, you've probably seen some of our demos before. Uh, we've got a lot of brake handles, yep. um, you know, motorcycle enthusiasts of the company. Yeah. So nice. um, this is a, a clutch lever actually and what it's demonstrating is that we can print parts with a hollow honeycombed infill um, which that essentially means that you can lightweight a part um, as a lot of people know um, in the engineering world most of the forces are concentrated to the outside of the part so we're still producing a very strong outer skin but able to lightweight it using a honeycomb infill um, this is something that you normally would not be able to do using a laser system because it would trap the powder inside okay um, so going down here um, this is a demo that shows sort of the precision that we can achieve with uh, our printing process. Now, I wouldn't uh, I just specify here, the threads are actually stock parts off the shelf, but we're able to print the, uh, the threads that these uh, go into. Uh, so, although you might want to still chase them afterwards, and there are a lot of ways to do threads, it just goes to show that there is a way to do that and uh, to produce um, high precision parts. You know what, I can't help but ask about this. I mean, this, this is actually moving. Now, was this printed? Like this? Yes. Uh, so this is a printed part, um, the turbine impeller. Um, this is for a, a turbo, and um, this is really kind of just to demonstrate that we can do functional prototyping using our process. Sometimes, uh, if you were to wait on this to come back from a five-axis machine shop, yeah, um, you would be waiting weeks for it. But with the Metal X process, you could produce it in two to three days. In two to three days. Two to three days. So wow. is that typical of kind of all the parts, or is that part specific? The two to three days for this particular part. So parts are gonna uh, obviously uh, depend uh, depending on how big they are. Um, they might take longer or shorter. Uh, what we tend to enjoy doing is actually batching parts. Yeah. So we have in our shop not just one machine, but a dozen machines. Yeah. Okay. And so what we do is we'll print uh, on each of those machines. We'll print a part, and at the end of the day, we'll take those parts, put them all in to uh, the wash bath. Um, so that's the second part of the, the, um, the post-processing that we do at Markforge. And um, after that, we then move them to the center. So within the course of three days, we could have a you know, half dozen parts come out of, the, out of our machine. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. wow, that's incredible. That's right. incredible. Is there anything else here that we should be taking note of? Yeah, sure. Um, so 
I guess uh, pick the coolest one. Yeah, pick the coolest one. <laughs> yeah. one. One of the um, the really cool case studies that we've done recently is actually with Stanley Black and Decker. So Stanley Black and Decker um, is using this part for a post driver. A post driver is essentially uh, any time that you see a um, a sign. Uh, on the road, yeah. they have to dig a post deep into the ground using a lot of horsepower, a lot of torque to be able to, to dig that hole out. Yeah. Um, and they're, uh, Previously they made this part um, using three separate pieces, each of which had to go through the machine shop, each right. of which had to, they were spending a lot of time doing. Um, we partnered with Stanley Black & Decker to kind of work through that part and produce a better version of it. So instead of three parts now, we have one. This part took, you know, on the order of hours to print. Wow. And we set, ran it through the post processing and they actually ran it through the entire battery of tests for the post driver and they were unable to break it. So, wow. so this is a part where you know we're seeing a lot of promise uh, going towards kind of low volume production. Right. And even if you were to scale the machines in a way, you could get to high volume production if you wanted to. So needless to say, they're a happy Mark IV customer. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So Good this is actually guys. the Metal X right here, correct? Yeah, and that's yeah. the Metal X right here. And this is actually printing a part as we speak. Yes. This is the Metal X in action, everybody. So you know what, Charles, I think we've taken up a lot of your time. Thank you so much hey. for spending the time to talk to us on camera. We sincerely Absolutely. appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. So a big thank you to Charles and everyone from Mark Forge and all of you who joined us here at the Fabtech Show. And if you weren't able to join us this year and you'd like some information on the Metal X or any of the Mark Forge products, you can write to us at sales at cadmicro.com. And don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. I'm Nick. I'm Sarah. We'll, we'll see, see you soon. soon.